Okay, tree kiddos, um, I am back for part two of section 7.1. I'm going to do problems 8 through 14. Um, and just a reminder that there is a trig cheat sheet that I may be referencing um, that is in your class drive um, on Google Classroom. And um, these videos are in the chapter seven folder in the class drive. So problem eight, we have cotangent theta over sine theta minus cosecant theta. Now remember, the goal on these is to rewrite trig functions in terms of sine and cosine. That is usually the best way to start, okay? And just a reminder that this is section 7.1, part B. So cotangent is cosine over sine. And cosecant is 1 over sine. Now, on the bottom, on the denominator, we need to get common denominators. We need to get together those two terms in the bottom of that complex fraction. So, I need to get a denominator of sine theta. So, I'm going to have to multiply... by a sine theta over sine theta here on the left hand side. So then that is going to give me the cosine theta over sine theta over sine squared theta over sine theta minus one over sine theta. Now, again, that sine theta on the left side of the denominator, I've got to multiply top and bottom by sine to get common denominators. Now that I know these two have the same denominator, I can combine them together. So again, now I've got one big complex fraction. Well, all that means is it's the top divided by the bottom. And remember, when you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal of the second one. So I'm going to flip the bottom and multiply it. Now, in doing that, what I notice here is that my sine thetas will cancel, and I'm left with cosine theta over sine, theta, sine squared theta minus 1. Now, sine squared theta minus 1, does that ring a bell to anybody? That is that trig identity. Okay, that we talked about in the first part. So let's remind ourselves. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. So that means that sine squared x minus 1 equals negative cosine squared x. So that's what we're going to replace that second fraction's denominator with, is negative cosine squared x, or cosine squared theta. So, OK? 
Okay, we substituted the negative cosine squared theta for the sine squared theta minus one. We just rearranged the trig identity. Now, one of those cosines will cancel top and bottom. So this leaves me with one over negative cosine theta. Well, one over negative cosine theta, one over cosine is secant. So that's negative secant theta. Okay, one over cosine is secant. We had the negative in the bottom, so it needs to stay in the answer. All right, go into the next one. I have six sine x secant x. over 10x. Now again, I'm going to rewrite secant as 1 over cosine and tangent as sine over cosine. by the reciprocal. So your cosines cancel, your sines cancel, you are just left with the number six. Cosine 
cosine y plus 1 all over cosine y. Now, I kind of did two steps together there. I had the 8 times the cosine y and then plus the 1 on the other fraction in the denominator. So I went ahead and combined those together because they're both going to have the same denominator of cosine y. Now, Again, remember, big fat fraction bar is a division symbol. So when we divide, we multiply by the inverse. So this is 1 plus 8 cosine y times cosine y over 8 cosine y plus 1. Now, notice I put parentheses in them, and of course, here's another dead spot in my board. Let me scooch it up. This is also like over the number 1, and then I can cancel the 1 plus 8 cosine y. These are the same thing. So, all that's left is just cosine y. That would be my answer. That's all I can do. Now, let's do another one. See if I can squeeze it in here on the right side of the board. I have cosecant squared x minus 1 over cosecant squared x. Now, once again, I would write these in terms of sine and cosine. So cosecant is 1 over sine. Okay, so that's going to be my first step. Again, I'm going to have to multiply that 1 by sine squared over sine squared to get common denominator. So then that's going to give me the new, number, new numerator of 1 minus sine squared x over sine squared x divided by, big fat fraction bar, 1 over sine squared x. Now, again, big fat fraction bar is division symbol. The top divided by the bottom is the top times the reciprocal of the bottom. Okay? So this is 1 minus sine squared x over sine squared x times sine squared x over 1. You flip the bottom. Now, look what cancels here. Sine squared x's cancel out. And what is 1 minus sine squared x equal? Again, back to that trig identity. Your trig identity, 1 minus sine squared x would equal cosine squared x. And that is my answer. So, this equals cosine squared x. Again, this was the trig identity. I've got cosecant x minus sine x over cotangent x.
cosecant x minus sine x over cotangent x. Again, I'm going to rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. So, 1 over sine x minus sine x, all over cosine x over sine x. Now, again, got to have common denominators on the top to combine the two parts. So we're multiplying the sine x by another sine x over sine x. So this gives us 1 minus sine squared x over sine x over cosine x over sine x. Now, again, remember the big fat fraction bar is a division symbol. So this is One minus sine squared x over sine x times sine x over cosine x. And then you notice we can cancel out the sine x's. Now, what else do you notice about the 1 minus sine squared x? Once again, just like the previous problem, that's a trig identity. So, this turns into cosine squared x over cosine x. Well then of course I can cancel out one of the cosines and I am just left with cosine x. 1 minus sine squared x equals cosine squared x. That's one of the trig identities, just like last step. Now, last one for this part. I have cosecant x plus 1 over cotangent x plus cosine x. Cotangent x plus cosine x. Now again, I'm going to rewrite the cosecant as 1 over sine, and I'm going to rewrite the cotangent as cosine over sine. Now, on top and bottom, I've got to combine both terms, so I've got to have common denominators. So, I have got to multiply this by sine x over sine x, and I've got to multiply this by sine x over sine x. When I do that, then I am going to get 1 plus sine x over sine x in the numerator, and in the denominator, I'm going to have cosine x plus sine x cosine x all over sine x. Now again, big fat fraction bar here is like a division symbol. So I'm going to take the top times the reciprocal of the bottom. Factoring out the cosine x, 
So then what's left is a 1 plus sine x. Now, what do you notice then? The top and the bottom both have 1 plus sine x. I can cancel those. All I am left with then is 1 over cosine x, which is the trig function secant x. 